When we read the story of God's people in exile through Daniel's eyes, we see that exile can be an excellent time for personal revival. After Daniel graduates the top of his class at Babylon University, he lands a cabinet position in Babylon's version of the White House. I'm not sure if King Nebuchadnezzar learned anything from that tower incident, but the leader of that not-so-free world had a dream. He woke up troubled, but he couldn't remember the dream. So he calls for his top advisors to first tell him the details of his dream. The palace staff, of course, is petrified. No one can do this, they say to him, except the gods whose dwelling is not with human beings. This was not the answer Nebuchadnezzar was looking for. So the Secret Service stood ready to dispose of the entire cabinet, including Daniel. But instead of running from the West Wing, Daniel made two appointments, one with the King of Babylon and one with the God of Heaven. Notice how Daniel addresses God. He asks for mercy from the God of Heaven and bless the God of Heaven when the dream was disclosed to him. He says, God changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. The God of Heaven you see, is not far away. And he does dwell with his people and rules the earth through them. The dream presents the world's kingdoms as an enormous, dazzling statue, standing tall, impressive, and awesome in appearance. Until suddenly, out of nowhere, a heaven-cut stone flies toward the statue and breaks it into pieces. The dream ends with the stone becoming a great mountain on earth, filling creation with heaven's glory. Daniel's translation, The God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. It shall stand forever. It's easy to be anxious in exile. We're tempted to worry about running out of food, toilet paper, cleaning supplies. But Jesus, the rock of our salvation, said, Do not be anxious about these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Being in social exile is a chance for us to prioritize God's kingdom above everything else. Let's get practical. Every kingdom has three elements. A king, a people, and a territory. And according to Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a king who dies on the cross must be the king of a rather strange kingdom. So what kind of kingdom is God's kingdom? Well, there's a king. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus said. And his realm? He's Lord of all creation, ruling from heaven over the earth. But how does he reign? He reigns through his people, through you and through me. The cross creates a community of ransomed people living under the reign of God. And when we open ourselves up to the King through prayer, scripture study, and worship, something happens. We're essentially standing at an invisible podium saying, Here I am, Lord. Speak to me. Fill me. Use me. I'm ready and available. What do you want me to do? That's how God's kingdom works. His spirit reigns through you. It was in exile that Daniel learned to respond to his challenging situation with prudence and discretion.
our social exile is also a time for character building in prudence and discretion. But what does that mean? Simply ask yourself, what can I do to become more careful and vigilant in my life? How can I develop a more sensible, moderate lifestyle that will carry over after this social exile is over? I know sometimes it feels as if our world's imploding. But what if the God of heaven is breaking in and using the disruption to further his stone mountain kingdom? Perhaps the king just wants his people to become more like Daniel, more prudent, more cautious, more aware, more sensible. Tune in next week.